We're halfway done this year, but the releases are far from over yet. I already know that we will have even more new favorites in the next half, but we can't ignore all the cozy gems that we've already been blessed with in 2022 so far on the Switch, but also on Steam. <laughs> These are the games that I've been playing non-stop and also keeping me company these last couple of months at home. So let's talk about them. <laughs> also, I do know that the Nintendo eShop and also Steam are having their mega crazy summer sales right now, so it might be worth checking these store pages out if any of these games sound interesting to you. By the way, hey, my name is Kat. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, thank you so much for joining. Please consider sticking around and checking out my other videos if you're into cute, casual, and cozy games, and maybe even subscribe if you'd like to hang out and see more. <laughs> In no particular order, Cat Cafe Manager has been one of my go-to cozy games pretty much since it released, and even if I have just a few minutes to pop in and play, or if I have an hour, maybe two, or three <laughs> to play this game, I am all for it. If you're a Diner Dash or Cooking Mama kid, you will probably love this gameplay. It's a cafe management sim as the title suggests. Your grandmother left you this cozy cat cafe in the village of Catterwall Way, and it's up to you to spruce it up, you know, decorate it how you want, build relationships with the locals, and learn about the best drinks and food menus to serve them. Of course, not to forget, adopt the most adorable cats to live in your cafe. There's also a mysterious cat god and a cat shrine in town that you're left to uncover the secrets of. Overall, just such a good game to relax and unwind to. I think many of you will like it and it's available on Switch and Steam. Little Witch in the Woods is a game that I got an amazing opportunity to try out the first English demo last year, and I've been looking forward to the full game release ever since. Feel free to check out my gameplay linked in the cards. I always forget which side the cards are on, but anyway. <laughs> I know many of you have been really excited for this one as well. If you like witchy, magical themes and games, crafting potions, spells, and a lovable cast of little pixel characters, this game is a must-have. You play as Ellie, a witch apprentice, and you experience her daily life on the way to becoming an official witch. Make friends with the villagers and use the magic you learn to help make the world a better place for everyone. It is finally out on early access on Steam and hopefully we will see it on the Switch and other platforms one day too. Speaking of witchy and magical goodness, a game to really watch out for is Wildflowers. It is playable on Apple Arcade now and very soon to be on Nintendo Switch and Steam. I'm currently checking out the demo on the Steam Deck and I gotta say, you're not gonna wanna miss this one. <laughs> it's got everything we want in a game and more. It follows the character Tara and she moves to the most aesthetic cottagecore town of Fairhaven. She's there to help her elderly grandmother with her farm, but she soon learns that her grandmother is actually part of a witch coven and things get a little more interesting from there. Farm, fish, gather, take care of animals by day, and cast spells by night. Get to know all the mysteries of this town and the rich backstories of all the townspeople. I really appreciate this game's emphasis on diversity and inclusivity as well through all the characters. And did I mention the dialogue is fully voiced? Wildflowers is truly impressive in many ways and no doubt deserving of all the love. Time on Frog Island kicks off by you finding yourself shipwrecked on a very strange island and yes, all the inhabitants are all sorts of frogs. <laughs> Find materials to fix your boat by scavenging, trading, or doing favors for all of these froggies. <laughs> you will encounter the most curious cast of characters, puzzles, hidden treasures, and more as you keep exploring. You never really know what you'll find in the next turn. You basically have to do all you can to survive out here and also 
find a way home. But be careful because it's really easy to get sidetracked and you may just end up wanting to stay on this island anyway. <laughs> it's so relaxing and I really do love games like these that let you just wander and do everything at your own pace. It's now available on Steam and very soon on the Nintendo Switch. Another game that I got to check out last year, so links in the cards once again if you want to see my gameplay. My Time at Sandrock is a much awaited game from the makers of my time at Portia. And similar to Portia, you're a fledgling builder in this town set in a post-apocalyptic world 300 years after the day of calamity destroyed everything. So it's up to you to gather scarce resources, build structures and machines, and help the town come out of its impending doom. You and the citizens must now work together to rebuild and remake a brand new civilization. But that of course comes with many challenges along the way. If you've played my time at Portia, You'll know exactly what to expect from this one, but make it 10 times better, at least. <laughs> it's currently available on Early Access on Steam, but I don't doubt it'll come to the rest of the other platforms just like Portia before it. You might be familiar with this next game also because it is another one that I previewed on the channel. I know some wonder if I continue playing the games after I preview them and the answer is yes, absolutely. I don't tend to recommend games that I don't personally enjoy myself and this was definitely one of them. Crow Song of the Ever Tree is available on all platforms and it's about the worlds of Ilaria which has sadly been destroyed. You're the last alchemist and the only one who could save the ever tree. You have to bring it back to life and nurture these little communities which you're able to freely build and decorate and customize to be the town of your dreams. As each new world grows, there are also lots of secrets to unveil and explore. There's lots to do in this game and it surely will not disappoint if you're looking for your next cozy game. Now you guys know when it comes to mobile gaming, cute and cozy are my main requirements, of course. And since my phone isn't really my main gaming device, I think it's just perfect for very light and casual and even relaxing games when I have only a few minutes to play. That's why I'm really excited to introduce this game and also they kindly sponsored this portion of the video, Lively Island. Lively Island is a virtual pet game where you take care of your pets, also known as Livelies, and you get an island which you can decorate and a character which you can customize to your heart's content. I've been playing this for the last few months now, so I'm really excited to finally be able to share it with all of you. It's a popular franchise in Japan and they're now making their way over to the West. They're actually celebrating their 20th anniversary this year and also the first birthday of the mobile version of Lively Island. It's a nice little getaway for a few minutes each day and they're coming out with new items all the time to decorate your island or dress up your character and your livelies. So the options are almost endless. You gotta love the creative expression you have in this game. I also love being able to interact or trade my collection with all the other players from around the world. So check out the link in the description if you'd like to learn more or you want to download the game for your iOS or Android device. Thank you again to Lively Island and now on to the rest of our cozy games. Now shifting gears a little bit from the farming sims and life management, I think this is such an underrated gem and it is the cruel king and the great hero. If this looks a little bit familiar, it's because it's by the same studio of another underrated cozy game that I've talked about before, which is The Liar Princess and the Blind Prince. This game is a side-scrolling, storybook-esque RPG about a girl who strives to become a great hero with the help of her dragon protector. It's just very whimsical and fairy tale like There's much to love about this beautifully hand-drawn world. Of course, it's also got a very heartwarming story about kindness and family and friendship. The characters are lovable and it's such a wholesome game that hopefully more of you can enjoy. Available on the Switch and PlayStation. This next game is like Zoo Tycoon or Planet Zoo but pixel art and more cute and cozy. <laughs> I was obsessed with Zoo Tycoon as a kid so when I learned about this game I was all over it and it did not disappoint. Let's Build a Zoo is available on Steam right now and one of my favorites to play on the Steam Deck currently. They also just recently came out with their Dinosaur Island DLC which is like a Jurassic World evolution but cute little pixel dinos. <laughs> If you've never played anything like it before, it's basically a zoo management sim 
where you get to build a zoo from the ground up, adopt animals, you hire staff, and decorate the space however you like. The goal, of course, is for your zoo to thrive and make sure that your visitors are happy and content whenever they come. You can also breed really funny combinations like a chicken and a cow to make a chicow, or a crocodile and duck to make a crocoduck. <laughs> I mean, what more can you ask for? And last but not the least is a sandbox survival game, Core Keeper. The best way I can describe it is like a Minecraft meets Stardew Valley. And when I tell you I could not stop playing this game since I started it, yeah. <laughs> it's currently on early access on Steam and you're an explorer who finds himself in a cavern with seemingly no way of getting out. You have to craft your equipment, mine, build a base, create a farm, cook. There are monsters, of course, that you have to defeat and you have to survive so you can keep exploring another day. You can play single player or multiplayer with up to seven other players, which makes it all the more fun. You can each have your cute little roles, you know, and help each other out. They also just got the first major update this week called the Sunken Sea, which gives you even more places to traverse. I really hope we get to see this on more platforms eventually. So which cozy games have you been enjoying so far in 2022 or which ones are you really looking forward to in the next few months? I know I still have a long list that I really want to play and share with all of you. So give this video a like if you'd like to see more, maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching as always. Take care of yourselves and I will see you next time.